of the Lord. Thank you for what you're doing for our family. Thank you for what you're doing for our children right now. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing for counselor. Thank you for healing that bitch. Thank you for taking care of the ones that I've person, Father. Thank you just for being in the midst of everything, Father. Because, Lord, we need you every second, every minute, every day, all day long, Father. We just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. I want to thank Deacon Brown for that powerful message he gave us. And uh, I want to thank you for listening to that scripture that I read. And I'm going to sing. We pray to thee, O God, and revive us again. We pray to you, O God, for the Son of our for the Jesus who died and is now going to come. Hallelujah, I'm a glory. Hallelujah, I'm a glory. Hallelujah, I'm a glory. We die to
Oh, 
Our Father, our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the one who went up Calvary, died on that old rugged cross, rose up on the third day with all power in his hands. We say thank you, O oh God. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the gifts to the tree of life. Then, O oh God, we come this morning to worship and give you the honor and praise, O oh God, that you rightly deserve. We take the time to say thank you for waking us up this morning. We call our name one by one. And as we open our eyes, we say a new day, a day we never say. Then you allowed us to travel, uh, to dress ourselves and to close ourselves in to be in our right mind. Then you was good enough to allow us to travel along the highways, the dangerous highways, and here we stand, oh God, in the house of prayer. We said thank you again. We thank you for this fellowship that we have come together this morning and we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you how he showed up this morning, oh God. We thank you for the word. We thank you as we welcome him again, oh God. This second watch, oh God, we, we say thank you as he his spirit moved, oh God, and they searched our heart this morning. But we all stand in the need of prayer. Oh God, some stand this morning, oh God, in, in the need of a job. Some stand because they have having trouble in their home. Oh God, some stand because they worry about their sons and daughters and grandkids, oh God. They some stand because they're worried about their help, oh God. They have bad news, oh God. But we know that you are a mighty God. And there's nothing too hard for you. We say thank you, oh God. We thank you for your long suffering, Lord. Your mercy and your grace. We just come to say we love you, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for our young people as they sang this morning, oh God. From the young to the oldest, oh God. 
We pray that you pour a blessing upon us, O oh God, this morning, according to your riches and your glory. We come to pray for the choir that they are ready to sing the song of Zion. We pray uh, for a fresh anointing to fall upon them, O oh God. We pray for our pastor as he's ready to bring the word, O oh God. We pray for a fresh anointing to fall upon them, O oh God. We say thank you again. Then, Lord, we pray for this community. We pray for those bereaved families, oh God, who sons and daughters are being shot down, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you comfort them, oh God. We pray for the life is lost, not only that is lost in the family, oh God, but it's destroyed. The whole family, oh God, is destroyed the family and the friends, oh God. We pray, oh God, as a spirit move, oh God, that it comes against violence, oh God, in our community. We pray, oh God, as your people, oh God, that we, oh God, that we spread this gospel throughout the community, throughout the world, oh God. Let me tell these young people to put those guns down and they found it raised, oh God. We pray for them, oh God, but sometimes they don't have a great understanding. But we pray that the Holy Spirit move, oh God, and touch their hearts, oh God, that, that He just change their heart and change their life, oh God. We say thank you, oh God, that the Spirit move on to that grandma who's sitting home right now. Worry whether her grandson going to come to that door. The mother who's sitting down worry whether their son going to come to the door. Oh God, we pray that you comfort them, oh God. We pray that your spirit, oh God, come to, come to the free family, oh God, also in our servants, oh God. Our members, oh God, we pray for the sick and the shut in, oh God. We pray that you comfort their hearts, oh God, and some want to be here, but I'm not able. But we pray that you just touch, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. And then, oh God, we just there thank, oh God, we come to give you the praise and the honor. We lift our hands up and our voices and say hallelujah to you, oh God. As you sit high and mighty on the throne, we say thank you, oh God. We praise and honor you, O oh God, and say that we love you, O oh God. We love you for everything that you've done for us and going to do, O oh God, in our future. We say thank you. We ask all these blessings in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let the church say amen. 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 And amen. Simmons, staff minister Reverend Bobby Williams, other ministers of Daniels in the pulpit, office members and friends, good morning and welcome to our 10.30 a.m. service. I have quite a bit of information for you, so kind of bear with me. I may be reading a little fast, so if you don't get all of it, see me later. Those names that appear in our church bulletin are asking for the prayers of the pastor and entire church. We also like to welcome those back who are returning due to illness and bereavement. Sister Earlene Harding, the daughter of the late Mother Pearlene Harding, passed away. Sister Earlene is the niece of our very own Sister Esther Miller, who is a member of our senior usher ministry. I have some cards and thank you notes. The heart remembers kind deeds and thoughtfulness. My heart remembers special people like all of you. Thank you so much for your calls, your cards, and your prayers, for it is a healing for my soul. God bless you all, Sister Linda Cannon. To the Abyssinian Church, wish there were words to let you know how much your thoughtfulness is appreciated. Thank you from Mary Everett. 
to Mrs. Jacqueline Williams and my Abyssinian Baptist family. Your thoughtfulness was special and very timely too. How good it is to know people such, such as you. God bless you, Tyler Hopper and the Wynn family. Dear Abyssinian layman, I'm writing to express my personal appreciation for your recent gift. Words cannot express how grateful I am for your generosity and your support. May God continue to bless the layman's ministry and continue to keep me in your prayers as I further my education. This is coming from Minister Nigel Evans. There will be senior choir rehearsal, I'm sorry, all choir rehearsal this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Asking all choir members please attend. This is coming from Reverend McLeod, your commissioner of music, and this is for your all choir's annual day. There are tickets for, the, uh, for Reverend Wynn, who will be celebrating his first pastoral anniversary, and the banquet is scheduled for October the 16th. Now, some of you have got tickets for me, and you have not made a payment on your layaway plan. I need some layaway money, so please come and work with me on this. And those who do not have tickets, if you'd like a ticket, please see me after this service. Sister Stephen Ash, our combined mission president, and her missionaries would like to thank everyone who came out for the mission prayer breakfast yesterday. If you did not attend, you missed a blessing, spirit-filled affair, and the Lord used Deacon as Dorothy Clark to bring forth his word. Thank you. <laughs> Deacon Gerald Brown and the ABC Maynards would like to thank those who went fishing yesterday. I said this morning, I don't know if they caught anything, but I heard that they did. And if Brandon Kemp is in the house, we'd like to congratulate him on catching the largest fish. So congratulations. Deacon Earl Williams, the trustees and their spouses, and the Deaconess Ministry would like to thank each and every one of you who came out and supported them on their annual day last Sunday. They'd like to thank you for your financial support, your encouragement, and your presence last Sunday. Essex County Senior Wellness Day is going to be held this Tuesday, September 29th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Richard Gay Cody Arena, a.k.a. the Turtleback Zoo in uh, West Orange, New Jersey. They have information for transportation should you need it, and they're going to have a lot of different programs and different events going on, so if you need further information, see me after the service. All junior and senior ushers, there will be a rehearsal on this Saturday, October the 3rd and on the 10th. This is in preparation for your annual day. Diamonds in the Rough Cafe is featured Reverend Tyrone Williams today at 3.30 and the second show is at 4.45. They are located on Clay Street in Newark if you are interested in attending. Mount Calvary Mission and Baptist Church present Medicare presentation. It's going to be on Saturday, October 3rd at 10 a.m. and that will be held in Jersey City, New Jersey. On Saturday, October the 10th, from 8 to 3, the United Missionary Baptist Convention will sponsor the annual Congress of Christian Education Conference to be held at Mount Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church of the state of New Jersey, where the Reverend W. Lewis McDowell is the pastor. They're going to have breakfast and lunch, and the Congress President, Reverend Wallace, will give his annual address. Now, those of you who signed up in April with Sister Cannon and Sister Giovanna Comer, who said you were going, but it's been rescheduled for this date, if you're still going, please ensure that you let them know. If you're not going, please let them know also because they do need a count. And Abyssinian has paid for 35 tickets and it's first come, first served basis. On the 11th, again, is our annual usher's anniversary. It's going to be at 3.30. They're asking everybody to please come out and support them as they do support the church when everybody else is having their annual day. Pastor Simmons will speak more on that. On the 12th through the 14th, United Missionary Baptist Convention annual session will be in um, session. And on the 13th, all choir rehearsal days is listed in your program, the 19th and the 28th, and November the 2nd and the 5th, and that's in preparation for your day. Now, the Women's Ministry has uh, Making Strides Walk for Breast Cancer. In your program, they said make the checks out to Abyssinia. Um, I have to check on that because um, the treasurer is saying that they should make the checks out to Abyssinia. So we'll get back to you with further information on that. I'd like to thank you for last Sunday's financial report, and that concludes my announcements. Yeah. <laughs> my knees are sort of bad from yesterday, so. <laughs> 
uh, in your name. Today we uh, wish all September uh, birthday. So if there's anyone here that has a birthday in September, please stand. Mm -hmm. Will everyone please send me happy birthday?
Amen. Y'all want me to know something? Call me and set Amen. Because if she started doing certain things, she don't want to get paid as a sister pastor. <laughs> and I ain't sharing. <laughs> Amen. So we, we got that. All right. Um, on this Thursday, there will be a pastor's breakfast at the Robert Tree. This is for preachers, pastors, imams, rabbis, you know. And um, if any of my preachers want to go, I have tickets. They're free. They're being sponsored by corporate sponsorship. Amen. I will be the master of ceremonies for that breakfast, and so if you're interested in going, let me know. You see the sign above my head. Usher's anniversary is coming up. Looking forward to a great day on that day. Amen? For the 10.30 and the 3.30 service, the music is going to be uh, performed by an all-male chorus out of Virginia. They're going to be here as my special guests, and uh, and they're going to sing. And, and, and after you hear them at the 10 30 service, I won't have to tell you to come back at 3 30 service. Amen. And uh, we're looking forward um, uh, to that. Um, the Men and Women Health Symposium that was scheduled for this Wednesday will be Wednesday, November the 18th, during the revival. All right. So please, ma'am, please, sirs, govern yourselves accordingly. Um, Deacon Danny Thomas and Deacon Hollis Ford asked me to ask you to pray for them and continue to keep them in prayer. I was able to visit with them this weekend. Um, and uh, Deacon Thomas was in rap form. Um, when I went to visit him, he was sitting up, he was feeding himself. He knew revival was coming up. And uh, he reminded me of the day when he was a part of the playboy. <laughs> Amen. I mean, and, and the point I'm trying to make here is his mind was functioning. He was, and, you know, it was a good day for him. And I really enjoyed the visit. Uh, Sister Hedman, Marilyn Hedman of the Senior Choir, is asking our prayers. She's going into surgery on this Tuesday. Amen. And we want to remember her in prayer and Sister uh, Jane Hargis and all of our sick and shut in, let us keep them in prayer. I'm asking your prayers for the family of the late sister Ethel Wright of the New Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church in Wake Cross, Georgia. I served as a pastor, and she and her husband was godparents to my children, and um, she went home to be with the Lord. A pastor texted me this morning, so we are praying uh, for her as well. Amen. Um, all Sunday school teachers and staff, uh, there's going to be a meeting immediately after this service um, held in the Thomas O'Neill Annex. Lunch will be available for the meeting attendees. Amen? So we're asking that we will govern ourselves accordingly. Uh, class has read an announcement uh, by Reverend Tyrone Williams, uh, part of our music ministry. And uh, he's going to be at the Diamond in the Rough Cafe. That's what it said. In the D A R U F F Cafe in Lime. I like the cafe. I'm worried about the Lime. <laughs> Present Soul Food Sunday Gospel Praise Concert, and he will be there. Um, and uh, I think that members of he, he has been part of the Shirley Caesar singing, Mom, I Want to Sing, First Place Women McDonald's Gospel Fest, Ministry of Music at Absidian Baptist Church, the Church of the Pitt Shepherd in New Jersey. He comes with great credentials. We know him. And uh, that's this afternoon. One show is at 3.30. Second show is at 4.45. Amen? So if you want to go out and eat and enjoy some great gospel singing, then that's a good place to go. You don't worry about that. <laughs> Amen.
those of you that wish to find your way down to the altar, you can do so at this time. prayer. Eternal Father, we, we find ourselves once more together. Dear Lord, at your footstool of mercy, we come, Father, first to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you found favor in us this morning, O Lord, that you allowed us to wake up in time and not eternity. We thank you, Father, that you've given us life, health, and strength. We thank you, Father, that you've given us clothes on our backs and food on our tables. We thank you, Father, for all family and friends. Father, we thank you that we are not where we used to be. We thank you, O Lord, that you've allowed us to be here this today. Father, we thank you for those that have gathered here at your altar. Realizing, Father, that there are some that came with a few concerns, a few problems, a few heartaches, and a few disappointments, but let me be the first to tell them that they are in the right place. Father, they should uh, have uh, patience to wait on thee. Father, that you can deliver, but you will deliver in your own due time and according to thy divine will. Father, we come uh, to your altar, Lord, with some things that we impose upon ourselves, some things we may have said to others, some things we may have done to others that may not have been pleasing in thy sight. Father, this is an opportunity where we can stand before your throne and say, forgive me, Lord, for what I have done. Father, we try to get away with a few things, but Lord, you know all about it. So we are asking right now for forgiveness, Lord. We are asking that you would toss them to the sea of forgiveness and remember them no more. Father, we stand before you as empty pictures before a full fountain. Father, we are seeking to be filled from on high. Father, we know that we don't have all that we should have and all the things that we think we uh, desire, but Father, you know all that we stand in need of. And you know exactly what we're able to handle. Father, we will complain after uh, day after day, no matter how many blessings you bestow upon us. Father, we want to be CEOs and CIOs and all these different acronyms. But sometimes, Father, we don't have the capabilities of washing a, a simple car. We don't have the capabilities of even dusting off the mud of our shoes, oh Lord. But we want to own so many different things. Father, you know our capabilities, you know our flexibilities, you know all about us, Father. And we're just asking, Father, that you will deliver in your own due time. And Father, give us all that we stand in need of. And Father, let me be the first to say those that have brought issues to this altar, oh Lord, that they will leave it here because those battles are not theirs, it belongs to you. Father, we don't want to walk back to our seats with what we brought up here with. Father, we will show that we don't have faith and trust in you if we do that. So, Father, let us walk back a little bit lighter, a little bit more confident, a little bit more understanding that, Father, you will deliver and that you will give us all that we left at your footstool. But, Father, there is one thing about that, and that is we're not asking for it to happen by the time we sit down, but it may be two weeks from now, it may be two months from now. And it could be two years from now. But Father, we know that you will deliver. Because you are a delivery God. That you have the healing powers to give us all that we need. So Father, we ask now those things, O oh Lord, that we uh, may not have had over our lifetime, O oh Lord. That Father, you understood those things. You've seen us. You've given us people in our path. You've given us time. You've given us so many different things, oh Lord. And we should just stand right where we are to say thank you. 
Father, because if the truth be told, things could be much worse than what it is. Father, if we were to go into the hospitals, if we were to go into the convalescent homes, if we were to even walk down to the street to our neighbors and, and visit them, oh Lord, we would see that conditions could be much worse than what it is today. Father, some of us may not have the opportunity, the financial capabilities of paying for certain things, but Father, we have the opportunity to realize we shouldn't get ourselves in situations we can't get out of. Father, because we want to be like the Joneses. We want to we want to look like them. We want to talk like them. But I heard this morning, if we don't walk the walk, uh, Father, then, then nothing will really matter. Father, because I, I've heard over my lifetime that may the life I live speak for me. Because anybody can talk the talk, but not everybody can do the walk. So, Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We just thank you, Lord, for just sitting high and looking low. We thank you for being the rose of sharing. We thank you, O oh Lord, for being that wheel in the middle of a wheel. We thank you, Father, for being there in the midnight hour when we didn't have anyone, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, when our bodies was, was wrapped with pain, O oh Lord, and we just didn't know how to get comfort. Father, we just thank you that you sent somebody our way. And Father, when sometimes when things look to be despair, when things look like we just can't get out of our present environment, oh Lord, let us cling to your unchanging hand. Because Father, you said that you would never leave us for for sins, that you would put no more on us than we can bear. And Father, we believe that and we trust that and we want to go out and stand boldly and tell others about the goodness of you, oh Lord. Because that's why we were made. We were made to give you praise. We were made to give you honor. We were prayed, made to give you glory because certainly you are worthy to be praised. So, Father, as we head back to our seats, O oh Lord, and sit down and listen to the message in which we will be presented, allow us to sit in our ten doors and be receptive to thy word. And not only, Lord, be, let us be hearers, but also doers of your word. Because, Father, we know that we live in a dying world and we live in perilous times that we need to hold on to your unchanging. So, Father, right now we ask as we close this prayer, but never have our loving presence to be. We ask, Lord, that you will be with us now and forevermore. And we will certainly be remindful to continue to give your name all praise, honor, and glory. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Selection. I want to ask and pray us for my aunt, Sister Mildred Chapman. She's back in the back, raise your hand up to you. On last Saturday, we had lost her grandson who was killed on Central Avenue in Newark, shot seven times in the back. And his wake is going to be this Thursday at Cottons in Orange. The one in orange. And then the funeral will be here at the city on Friday at Rush Angle. 
at 10 o'clock a.m. Amen. So I want to ask you to keep her and her family in your prayers. Um, young man that was killed, I, I buried his, both his mother and his father. And uh, so let's pray for this family that God will keep them strong and good.
and all of his words of our mouth the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight oh lord our strength and our redeemer in jesus name we pray and all the people said amen those who have the bible there's a word from the lord in the 46th psalm verses 1 through 11. That's Psalm 46. I'm going to read the entire psalm. Unlike this morning, during the course of my message, I will deal somehow with all 11 verses. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There's a river, the stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right earth. The heathens raged, the kingdom were moved, the ugly is voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he has made in the earth. He maketh war to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, he cutteth the spear in sunder, he burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still. And know that I am God, and I will be exalted among the heathens, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. That's the word of the Lord. I want to preach today from the subject, going on when you want to give up. Going on when you want to give up. We all have had days when we feel like digging a hole, climbing in, and pulling in the dirt over us. There are times when it seems that all we can do is just fall out of bed and lie on the floor until we recuperate. Sometimes our hurt is so bad that our spirit throbs on the inside of us. Our dreams fall apart, our hopes fade, and our life becomes a wearisome task. Marital problems, broken friendship, personal failures, health problems, finances, violence, fear, and, and, and loneliness, all of these contribute to our discouragement. Seems like if it's not one thing, it's another. Let me share this with you. Even though we will still have problems, even though difficulties will still touch us, even Hardship will still be a part of our experience. I want you to understand that you can still press on. We can still hang on in there. We can still go home when we feel like giving up. The sons of Korah, men of the priesthood, wrote a song in which they revealed the secret to doing that. In other words, they, they, they told us how we can go on when we feel like giving up. Let's consider the factors that will help us to go on. First of all, the sons of Korah in this song say that there is divine presence. When you read verses 1, 5, and 11, I want you to notice the influence and words in those three verses. The word refuge. The word means shelter or hiding place. And I don't know about you, but it, it, ever since I've been in the Christendom, ever since I've been in the church, ever since I've been born again, 
There have been times when I needed a hiding place. So, so, sometimes trouble, sometimes disappointment, sometimes situations in my life causes me to seek refuge somewhere. And, and there's no other place that I can find refuge except in God himself. Then we, we find the word strength. The, the, the word strength means our security, our boldness, our might. And, and notice what it says, God is our refuge and our strength. God is our hiding place and our security and our boldness and our might. And, and in other words, what we need to stop doing is telling God about our big mountain and then just tell our mountain about our big God. Then the third word that we find in, in those verses is the word present. The word tells us that he's always by our side to assist us. It's one thing when you're by my side just to keep an eye on me. But it's something else when you're by my side to assist me. And do you know you got some folk who tell you, oh, don't worry, I'll be there. Yes, yeah, so they can be up in your business. But are you there to help me? Are you there to go along beside me? Are you there to pick me up when I'm not the Bible? They said two are better than one. Because when one falls, the other is able to pick them up. My brothers and my sisters, our God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. In other words, he is nearer to you than your most trusted friend. And, and let me tell you, I don't have very many people I, you know, kind as friends. But there's one thing I know is that the Lord is my friend. Can you get a witness? Yeah, he's closer to you than your dearest loved one. He'll, he'll come to your help quicker than you can, can really call any of your allies. No wonder the song is crying out, where can I go from thy spirit or where can I feed? Of thy presence, if I'm sinned in the heaven, thou art there. If I make up my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. And yeah, he said, if I take the wings of the morning and I dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall guide me. Church, we need to know that it makes no difference where we are. God is always there. But many times we are like Israel, which said, you know, the Lord has forsaken me and, and the Lord has forgotten me. But I stop by to tell you this morning that God is telling us like he told the children of Israel. He said, can a woman forget her suffering child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will never forget you. God is saying that if your brother folk forget you, he will never forget you. But then, verse 5 says that there is a divine promise in all of this. And you need to see this because the previous verse says, Though the waters thereof roll and be troubled, talking about verse 3, Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah, there is a river of the street where I shall be glad, the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Now, now here's what I want you to see in verse number 5. He said, God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her at that right early. In other words, brothers and sisters, though you're walking through the waters, though you, you the word, your mountains are shaking, guess what he said? God is in the midst. But when did he say he will help her? Right here. Huh? God said he will help her when morning comes. Huh? Just maybe we have to go through the long night of sorrow and suffering, but the morning will bring help. Have you ever been sick and laid down at night, and when you woke up the next day, you felt so much better? You went to bed with trouble on your mind, but when you woke up, the trouble had gone away. You, you went to bed not knowing what you were going to do, but in the morning, you had the answer to your problem. You, you may have to go through a long night of pain, but the morning will come. You may have to go through a long night of sickness, but the morning, he will send his help. You may have to go through a long night of crying, but in the morning, 
He will wipe tears from your eyes. No wonder the songwriter said, We can make it do it for a night, but guess what? Joy coming in the morning. I need you to understand that if you hold on and don't give up before you know it, at the time when you least expect it, suddenly morning will come. I sleep well most nights. But some nights I don't sleep too well. And so what I do is I toss and I turn, have the television on, and then my wife will say, will you turn that television off? I know what that means. Either that or go in another room. So I get up and I go downstairs, turn the TV on and sit up. And the next thing I know, I'm waking up. And the morning has come. I need you to understand that if you hold on and don't give up before you know it at a time when you least expect it, morning will come. It reminds me that of that great song, In His Time, In His Time, He made all things beautiful in His time. In other words, it affirms that God comes not too early, nor does he come too late, but in his time. Hmm? That's why I told you this morning that one of the greatest songs that you could ever sing is he's an on time God. Yes, he is. May not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. And so I need to ask you a question. What do you do? When you're facing trouble in the midst of God's promises. You've got promises all around and yet you are facing trouble. When trouble comes, some of us forget about the promises of God. And what do we do? We step out as though it all depends upon us alone. Have you noticed some folks, you try to tell them what, what God will help them to do, and they keep telling you what they are not able to do? We face temptation alone, and, 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 and when we do that, guess what? We fall in the sea. And instead of getting up, we live there with guilt and a sense of failure. But can I tell you something right here? You are never a complete failure until you refuse to get up. You, you're not a failure because you fall. You are a failure because you refuse to get back up. Huh? So what? You made a mistake. Huh? You fell in the scene. Now what you need to do is ask God to forgive you and get you, you know, you get up and what? Try again. When you started walking for the first time, you failed. Huh? What? You got up. But you, you didn't get up by yourself. Mama reached her hand and what? Help you up. That's the way God is. Every time you fall, God's hand is extended to you to tell you what? Get up. So what? You got pregnant out of wedlock. Just go ahead and ask God to forgive you. And keep on going on and learn not to make that same mistake. Again, do you know why so many people are going back in the world? Or is afraid to embrace God as Savior? Because we as men and women of God are walking around with, with a mask on, acting like we are perfect people. And then telling them if you want to be saved, you've got to be perfect. How can you be perfect when there is none perfect but God? We are saved, we are being saved, and we shall be saved. Huh? But in between being saved and shall be saved, all of us got some shortcomings. During the, the war, the Catholic Church was in session. They were at a, at a council, and it was called the council.
Council of Trent. And at that council, because they had to cut it short, they only passed one rule, one resolution. And that resolution was that the Pope was infallible. He was incapable of leading the church astray. What they were really saying there, that the Pope was infallible, he couldn't see. The Bible says, all have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. And if, that, if what they say is true, and I don't believe that, that Peter was the first pope of the Catholic Church, Peter denied Christ. But what we need to do is stop walking around trying to convince folk that they got to be perfect. And, and, and we walk around like, like, like we never done anything. Oh, I ain't never prayed. I ain't never smoked. I ain't, I ain't never done no drugs. I ain't never cheated on my spouse. You've done something. No matter how great or, or how small. And the Bible says that if, if, if you say you are without sin, he said you deceive yourself. So you're a liar, and what? The truth is not in you. And you know what happens to liars. All liars shall have their part where in the lake of fire. And I know that's a little off my message, but I, I need to say that up in here this morning because somebody needs to hear that. But, but what do you do when, when you're faced with trouble in the midst of God's promises? Many, many get into a tight spot and find themselves outmatched, outnumbered, and, and outwitted by, by difficulties in life. And let me tell you, there will come a time when it seems like you're going to be overwhelmed by the difficulties in your life. Men try to handle the problem by, by themselves, only to find out that their problems are too large and too great. But there are others that take the Abrahamic position in Romans chapter 4, 18 through 21, Abraham hoped against hope and believed what the Lord had promised him. Now I want you to make a note of, of, of this. I want you to write Romans 4, 18 through 21 down so you can read it. But let me tell you how to read He said, who against hope believe in hope that he may become the father of many nations according to that which God has spoken? So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in the faith, he considered not his own body dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither not the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in the faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. In other words, they were saying to God, I'm old, my wife is barren. But if you say we're going to have a child, I, I, I believe what you say. I, I wonder this morning, is there anybody here that's like Abraham that can hope beyond hope? That can stand on, on the promises of God and say that if God said he's going to give it to me, even though I can't see it right now, huh? I'm persuaded that whatever he has promised, he's able to perform. I, I need to point out something here. The surety of the promise depends on the integrity of the one that's making the promise. You come to me and say, hey, brother, don't worry, I got your back. First thing I got to do is know, can he be trusted? Can I believe what he said? And then, one of the things that I will wait when I determine his integrity is does he have the ability to do what he said? I got some folk that love me, and I know that they love me, but when I get down and I, I don't call them for they prove. <laughs> they, they, they don't have the ability. Say amen somebody. And so, so, so what Abraham is saying here, not only do I trust God's promises, but I trust it because what? He has the ability. Many folks make promises that they don't intend to keep. 
Some of them make promises that they are unable to keep, while others make promises that they forget to keep. Many make promises and change and change their mind about keeping them. But when God makes a promise, first of all, He's able to keep it. Can you witness? Not only is He able to keep it, but but He intends to keep it, and He won't forget to keep it. I I, I got a call while I was in Georgia. I was already tired. I had just left Memphis and got on a plane and flew to Georgia. Began preaching that Sunday. Was preaching through that Thursday night. Then had to jump on a plane and come back here. And, and I was tired. And they, they called me and said, Reverend, uh, uh, we're having our pastor's birthday party at the church. Want to know if you will come and you be master chef on I said, yes, I will. Uh, Didn't remember nothing I was promised. Forgot all about it. Had already made up my mind. I was getting up Saturday morning, taking my car to the to the dealer so I could get it serviced, and, and then I was gonna come back home and come to the prep breakfast, and all of a sudden I got a letter in the mail that says, You are the master of ceremonies today from what was it, one o'clock to four o'clock. Now, I had the ability to keep the promise. I forgot the promise that I had made. Not only does God have the ability to keep the promise, guess what? He will not forget about keeping the promise. Say amen tonight. Not only is he able to keep it, but he intends to keep it, he won't forget it. But when God made the promise to Abraham, since he couldn't swear by no other body greater than himself, God swore by himself. That he would surely bless him and that his family would multiply. My brothers and sisters, when God makes you a promise, you can rest assured that he'll give it to you. But let me say this, before, before you can receive the promise, you've got to be in the proper position to receive it. Let me tell you, God has positional blessing. There's a certain place he intends to bless you. And in order for you to get that blessing, you've got to be in that particular place. And the reason why some of us have not gotten our blessing is because we're in the wrong position. Say amen tonight. So when God makes you a promise, you can rest assured that he will give it to you. But when you feel like giving up, just reach up, grab hold to the promises of God, and then hold on to them. See, what we do sometimes is we let go of his promises. God already told you what he's going to do. And, and, and so what we do is we grab hold to it, but if it doesn't come when we think it ought to come, we want to let go of it and try something else. But you see, God does not have a plan B. Say amen tonight. All, all God has is a plan, and he just has one plan. And he doesn't have a plan B. He doesn't need a plan B. Why? Because everything that he has already planned has already been worked out. But it is when, when you can believe the promises of God that you go on when you feel like giving up. Another factor that will keep you going on when you want to give up is the divine peace of God. Say peace of God. Peace of God. I want you to look with me at verse 2 and 10. Verse 2 says, Therefore will I not will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Look at verse 10. Be still. And know that I'm God, and I will be exalted in the, among the heathens, and I will be exalted in the earth. Let, let me tell you what God is saying. God is saying this. He said, I don't care what happens around you. I don't even care what is falling in around you. You don't have to fear because I'm still God and I'm still on the throne. And because I'm still on the throne, I can give you peace in the time of trouble. And because I'm still on the throne, I can give you peace that'll keep you smiling when you're supposed to be frowning. There's some 
folk that don't understand now. Why? Why is it that you walk around and smile? Huh? They, they've seen what you're going through. They don't understand why. Why you still got a smile on your face? But God has given you a peace that will keep your head above water when everybody else is drowning. And have you ever seen folk doing that time when they talk about we were in a depression and when times were hard, everybody else was having a hard time and you were getting along? My brother tells this story, and I think it's a good story to tell, because when they got ready to build the church that they were going to build, Everybody was telling man, you don't need to build no church. This is a bad time to be a folk of getting laid off and you know just just a whole little little story. He said, but the Lord told me that this is the time to be. And they built the church. Huh? But when other folk was, was worried about whether they could pay light bills or not. Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it out unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. We got too many scared Christians. Or walking around here worried about where your next meal is coming from. Worried about whether you're going to get a pink slip or not. Worried about whether you're going to be able to pay your mortgage or not. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. And if you want this kind of peace, you got to be still and know that he is God. That's that what you got to do. Huh? This means that, that you got to believe what the Bible says about God. He's all powerful. You gotta believe that. And if you believe that he's all powerful, guess what? You believe that there's nothing too hard for him to do. You gotta believe that he's all known. That means he knows everything. So you ought not be hesitant about asking the Lord about anything. And not only that, but he is present everywhere. This means trusting God with all your circumstances, all your problems, and even your life. This means resting in Him as our refuge and in our hiding place. All we have to do is just be still and act and behave like He's God. Huh? I never forget what time we were. In New Orleans, Louisiana, and I had taken 135 of y'all and other folk with me. And when we got there, my sister and my nieces, they, they got lost. And uh, I'm running around trying to get 135 folk in the room. My dad running around worried about his daughter being lost and his grandchildren. And, 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 and so uh, he said to me, you run around here worried about those other folk. You, you, you need to be worried about your good sister. And I said to him, shut the up. And he stepped up to me and looked up at me and said, Nigga, I ain't scared of you. <laughs> and immediately I started acting like my dad was present. I started acting like he was my dad. And what God is saying here, you got to act like I'm God. So when you have trouble, call me. When you are down, call me, I'll pick you up. When you are lost, let me know I'll come to you back to where you got to be. In other words, you got to know that the Lord, he is God. And, and when you understand that he is God and abide under his mighty hand, then you can go on when you feel like giving up. When, when, when we are still and, and know that he's God, he, he'll help us to handle what we can't handle, conquer what we thought we couldn't conquer. My brothers and sisters, when, when you feel like you want to give up, throw in the towel, go back home, I want you to do something for me. Before you give up, try looking up. Because if you look up, you won't give up. The, the reason why we give up is because we fail to look up. David said, I will lift up my eyes into the hills of which come in my help because my help comes from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. So don't you dare give up before looking up. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm determined to go all the way with the Lord. I don't care what happens or how dark the hour may be. 
adjustments and my offense and, and my defense. Uh, but even when it feels like the devil is winning, it may look like you, you are being defeated. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it may look like uh, you're not going to make it. It may look like you are sick. It may look like they're going to repossess your car. It may look like they're going to evict you from your house. But I'm not worried. Why? Because I'm no question with the two of I, I can still stand up. And I can say with confidence that the Lord is with me. The Lord of Jacob is my refuge. And because he's with me, the storm is going to pass over. Kind of remind me of this pilot who was piloting this plane. And he and the co-pilot were there in the cockpit and they got word from the tower that there was a bad storm approaching. And so they decided that, he said, you got to do two choices. Say, so either you can descend below the storm or you can ascend above the storm. So the co-pilot was troubled and because the, the plane was shaking because they were in the midst of the storm. And so the pilot decided that he would rise up an additional 10,000 feet. And all of a sudden, uh, the, the plane ride became smooth. And the co-pilot said to the pilot, look like the storm is over. And the pilot said, no, we are over the storm. And my brothers and my sisters are uh, even in the midst of the storm. God is able to raise you above the storm. Can I get a witness here? Yeah, because he is with you. The sun will shine today. It doesn't matter how cloudy your day is. The sun will shine today. Because he is with us. Our sorrows will be turned to joy. Because he is with us. Our midnights will turn into midday because he is with us. We will not quit. We dare not quit. We are determined to fight on because if we don't quit, yeah, uh, I want you to know what he says. Uh, he will call us faithful servants. For I heard uh, Jesus said, be thou faithful unto death. Uh, and I'll give you a crown of life. Uh, if you don't quit, uh, he will say, well done. Uh, you didn't quit uh, when things got hard. Uh, you didn't quit uh, when they put stumbling blocks in your way. Uh, and because you didn't quit, uh, because you're staying faithful to the cause, uh, you can come home uh, and rest from your labor. Uh, for I heard it, uh, the hymn I was just saying, uh, when we all uh, get to heaven, uh, what a day uh, of rejoicing it will be uh, when we all uh, see Jesus. Uh, we shall sing uh, and shout the victory. Uh, well, brother pastor, uh, how can we sing uh, and shout the victory? Uh, we can sing uh, and shout the victory uh, because Jesus uh, had already won the victory. Uh, it was early uh, one Friday morning. Uh, they him, uh, the parents healed, uh, they stretched him wide, uh, they hung him high, uh, he died uh, for the victory, uh, he died uh, for you and for me, uh, on Friday, uh, things look bad, uh, they buried him uh, in a horror grave, uh, all on Friday night, uh, it looked like the devil was winning, uh, all day Saturday, uh, and all Saturday night, the devil uh, was having a victory party, uh, but early, uh, I said early, uh, Sunday morning, uh, before I tell you what happened, uh, let me tell you why it happened, uh, because Jesus uh, made a promise, uh, destroyed his temple, but uh, for in three days, uh, I raised it up again, uh, and you know what happened, uh, he got it up uh, on the third day, uh, with all in his hands, and now I'm able to sing victory is mine. Victory is mine. I told Satan, get me behind me. Because victory today is mine. I know you want to give up, but 
of the victory has already been won. Jesus has already fought the battle. And all he asks you to do is just hold on and endure to the end. Just hang on in there. Things are going to get better. Tomorrow is coming. Hang on in there. The sun will shine. Hang on in there. It's going to get better. He told us to hold out and endure to the end. Because the battle isn't given to the strong nor the swift, but to them that hold out and endure to the end. Doors of the church are open.